thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that has watched my videos, to everybody that subscribed. I'm now over a thousand subscribers, and that's just crazy that there are a thousand people out there that either want to learn more about printing or feel bad for me and subscribe to make me feel good. Either way, I'll take it. Okay, if you're a designer or a printer, uh, you are obligated to make the product as good as possible if you want to be professional and you want your business to succeed. So I got a lot of JPEG images, uh, sometimes PNGs of all sorts of DPIs, all sorts of color spaces. Uh, so I'm just going to show you now, uh, this is a kind of a low quality uh, JPEG that's saved as an RGB, but it's going to be a grayscale image. I mean, it looks grayscale right now, uh, but it's actually saved as an RGB. So we're going to clean this thing up for printing. We're going to visually clean it up. We're going to make the final resolution correct and the dimensions correct. And all those combined are going to lower the file size, but not degrade the quality whatsoever. And we're going to make it better, actually, by adjusting the curves. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Okay, here is an image example that a customer would have given me to be in a book and uh, you know obviously our customers aren't going to know the best way to do things and they might not even have uh, a good image to begin with to give to us printers to print so this image is really washed out it needs to be adjusted just a little bit. I mean, we can't do miracles here, but we can make it a little bit better. Uh, first of all, this is a grayscale image. It was supplied as an RGB image, and it's a JPEG. And since it's going to be used in print, it needs to be saved as a TIFF. But first and foremost, we need to change it to grayscale. Now, what I'll also do is check the image size. And this is at 400 dpi, and that should really be 300. And 13 by 7 is way too large, uh, so it'll probably end up being like 6 or 7 inches in the book. So this is something I do with, well, it should be done with all photographs, is correctly sizing it. So it's going to be the correct, res correct resolution and it will be uh, the correct size for when it's printed. Now, if you notice here, this document used to be 15 megabytes, and now it's two and a half megabytes. And that's huge for uh, if you're doing a book or a catalog or something with lots of images. Uh, I'm pretty sure this book is going to have close to 200 images in it. So when you're shaving off, 13 megabytes times 200, your your file size is going to be tremendously smaller, and then you're going to have less rip time, less processing time. It's more effective all the way around. And the thing is, is if you make this 400 or 600 DPI, the rip is just going to discard that extra information when it comes time to print. So it really doesn't improve print quality. So we're going to change that. Now you notice it gets smaller, but it's still no big. It's still at 25% reduction here. Uh, so let's just zoom in there. And uh, let's see. The There's nothing here in the highlights. Uh, if you look over here uh, on your info palette, uh, through here, none of this is even 100% black. Uh, you know, 80s, maybe a 90 here or there. And even in your whitest whites, like over here, okay, that's about zero. So that's, so your white balance is good on this photo. You want to have a 100% black and a 0%, at least at some point in the image. So what I'm going to do is adjust my curves, Command M, and you can see here, 
this big curve. Now what we want to do is we don't really want to change our highlights. This is our highlights here. Uh, and we don't want to change any 100% blacks to like a 90. We want to keep that, but we do want to take other ones down. So we need to do some, uh, put some points in here to keep that curve correctly. So that's going to trim out some of the really dark areas. And you can see that uh, we're starting to get detail in the shadow. And that's what we want. I mean, before and after. It's not a whole lot, but you can see a little detail come through. It might have actually took it down a little bit too much. Now, I also, in not the very, very highlight, but somewhat of a highlight, I'd like to add, oops, add some more to it. That's just going to give us a broader range of grays in this image. Now, it's not a huge difference, but I think it's noticeable. And it's little things like this that are just going to make uh, your books and your printed products a little bit better. Um, you know, we could, uh, you could play around with this a little bit more even. I don't want to be, go too crazy to change the contrast on it entirely. And uh, I mean, to be honest with you, even after doing this for so many years, uh, I know kind of what I want to do, but you still kind of have to just move things around and look at it and say, oh, that was good, go the opposite direction, that's bad. So before, after, I think that's a lot nicer. So we're going to save that. And uh, when we go to save it, command S, whoops, sorry, we need to save as, make sure you save that as a TIFF and you'll be good. And the reality is, is you could spend a lot of time on all the images that are given to you and always kind of make it a little bit better, but you have to draw the line somewhere because you can't just do all that for free and most customers aren't gonna to want to pay for 20 minutes of uh, editing time per image. Uh, so you're gonna to have to kind of balance uh, economy and quality on making everything as good as you can in a reasonable amount of time. And one way that I do that too is doing a batch process and uh, what you do is uh, you set up an action and uh, you select a folder of images and Photoshop will automatically do whatever you want to all images in that folder and save it in another folder where you can just save over those same files you have. And uh, I'll show you right now how I do that. So Photoshop comes with a bunch of default actions, but for me, they don't really help out a whole lot. Um, so what I do is I make my own. I already have, so a grayscale TIFF, all that, all I set that one up to do is convert it to a grayscale image and save it as a TIFF. Uh, the reason I don't automatically put in there uh, 300 DPI or um, a dimension is because sometimes if I have 50 images, they're coming in at different sizes and different uh, DPIs, and I want to individually go set and crop those all to what I need. Uh, so sometimes I do create an action to do things like that if I know they're all the same, uh, you know, like rotating images, uh, scaling down. So like this job, I think it was 8 by 10 or something, I don't know, 2 inches but it would automatically scale them all. So to set up an action, it's really, really simple and saves a ton of time. You just come down here and click new, and we're gonna make a second one of these just so you know how I do it. Uh, you can set a color to it. And so there, when I hit record, so now it's recording in essence. So now whatever I do is gonna be saved. Uh, 
And actually what I should have done, let's just stop that and open an image first. Oops. Let's open an image in Photoshop. So here it is. It's an RGB. It's a JPEG. So what we do here is so again, we just made this new grayscale TIFF. Hit record. And then you go up here. Let's convert it to grayscale. And save as a TIFF. I know you want to uh, leave no compression here. Uh, there's no reason to downsize the image, and if you do uh, image compression, your quality is going to go down. Uh, and you can leave all this same as normal. So then uh, all you have to do is hit stop. You can close this out, and we can actually get rid of that because we don't need it anymore. That was just a, a sample to create this action. So then grayscale TIFF action we created is going to convert to grayscale and save it. So now to apply this, I have an image. Let's see, I have a folder of images here. And I want to convert all those and save them into this folder right beside them. Real easy. So you just open up Photoshop, File, Automate, Batch. And in here, uh, grayscale TIFF. So now it selects that. So then we have a source. We want to choose our source, which I have on my desktop here, supplied images. Choose that. So that's where it's going to pull all those photos from and apply that action. And the destination is going to be that folder right beside it then. Uh, a grayscale TIFF. Choose. And then uh, you can set it up so you can uh, change the document names here. I typically don't, uh, but uh, you can you can make make it really do whatever you want here. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it same file names. So then you just click OK. It's going to automatically open up all your images, change them all to grayscale, save them all as TIFFs in this other folder, and just that quick is done. This saves so much time, it's not even funny. It's the best thing ever, uh, especially if you're doing a lot of images. Uh, you can really save days of labor by doing this. So here is an example of a JPEG that's RGB that should really be bitmapped. Uh, and the bitmapped image is going to be a smaller image and much crisper. So, I mean, right now, all of this white area is information and, you know, all this area in between. Every single pixel has red, green, or blue information. So your file size is kind of big. Uh, I mean, it's not big, actually, but it's 428K there. And uh, doing a grayscale image would... Uh, make this smaller and it would work you know if we do grayscale uh, you know it's not going to change much but the file size is going to get smaller now we're at 142 so we trimmed off some information there uh, what I want to do is I want to get rid of this fuzzy area to make this a little crisper so I'm going to adjust my levels command L and right you can see here this curve. This is information that we don't want. We want to cut that off. All this is the area that are not black or white. We want this image to be 100% either black or white. So you trim off that highlight area. You can see that's going to make it a little more crisp. And over here, this is going to increase the black and we're going to have going to have a less in between pixels. Now leaving at this and saving it as a grayscale TIFF 
would be okay. But if you want the best quality, you're going to have to change this to a bitmap 1200 DPI. So, and you know, you think about it, oh, we're going from 72 to 1200. This is going to be a humongous file. But the reality is, is this 72 resolution, uh, you know, when it was in RGB is a lot more information than the 1200 because at 1200 pixels, you only have two bits of information. It's either black or white. It's on or off. Whereas you have multiple bit layers in a CMYK, RGB, or grayscale that creates a lot of excess information that really isn't necessary. So we're going to convert this to 1200 and then it's going to look like this. Now that means that it's going to print like legitimate black and white text. There won't be a half tone. And, uh, oh, well, it made a liar of me. The file size is larger now, but we should also go in here to our image size. And, uh, we know it's not going to be 12 inches wide. The book is, I think, eight and a half, so it won't be any bit longer than that. So that will cut down on our size too. But I guarantee you when this goes to print, it'll look like legitimate handwriting on the paper and there won't be a half tone on top of it. I've always been taught to save any images for print as a TIFF. And that is because that ensures the highest quality. Uh, if you save things as a JPEG, you have the options to lower quality, which we never want to do. Uh, you can save a high quality JPEG, but I think the file size is a lot larger. But basically anything that's going to be printed should be 300 DPI, a TIFF, and then in the correct color space. So if it's going to be printed in color, CMYK, and if it's going to be printed in grayscale, save it as a grayscale. If uh, it's going to the internet, then you can save it as an RGB or uh, a, a JPEG. But for printing, RGB should never be used, although often it is. Luckily, our RIPs nowadays can process that information and it doesn't make it too bad. But if you want to do everything to a T, it should be CMYK. So a huge part of making sure that the final product printed on the presses looks as good as possible is to make sure that your pre-press work is done correctly. So, And these are just two little examples of uh, things that really make your presses look as good as possible and make you look as good as possible and make sure that customers keep coming back time and time again. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you all later.